Hello and welcome. My name is Mumshad Manambet. In this video, we will learn about Helm. So uh, before we begin, um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel as we post new videos every week. Let's start by understanding what Helm is. Now, Kubernetes is awesome at managing complex infrastructures. We humans tend to struggle with complexity, though. Applications that we deploy into our Kubernetes cluster can become very complicated. A typical app is usually made up of a collection of objects that need to interconnect to make everything work. For example, even a relatively simple WordPress site might need the following. A deployment to uh, deploy the pods that you want to run, such as MySQL database servers or web servers, a persistent volume to store the database, a persistent volume claim, a service to expose the web server running in a pod uh, to the internet, um, a secret to store uh, credentials like admin passwords and other things, and maybe even more if you want extra stuff like periodic backups, jobs, and so on. For every object, we might need a separate YAML file. Then we need to apply kubectl apply on every uh, YAML file to get these objects created. And this can be a tedious task, but that's not the end of it. Now imagine we download these YAML files from the internet and we're not happy with the defaults, so we start changing stuff. The persistent volumes are 20 GB, but we know our website will need much more storage than that. So we go to the YAML files where the PVs and PVCs are declared and we change uh, 20 to 100. Uh, more stuff needs to be changed. Uh, well, we'll have to open up every YAML file and edit each one according to our needs. And now not bad enough yet. Now imagine two months go by and we now have to upgrade some components in our app. And so we are back to editing multiple YAML files uh, declarations again with great care so that we don't change the wrong thing um, in the wrong place. Now, sometime later, you want to delete the app and we'll need to remember each object that belongs to our app and delete them all one by one. Now, you might be thinking, hey, that's not a big deal. We can just write all object declarations in a single YAML file and be done with it. Well, that's true, but it might make it even harder to find stuff uh, when you're looking for, say, you want to troubleshoot uh, an issue. We'd have to continuously search for stuff that we need to edit in something that could be 25 pages of text. And at least in multiple files, they'd be somewhat organized and we'd know we'll find deployment related stuff in the mydeployment.yaml file, for example. Enter Helm. Helm changes the paradigm. Kubernetes doesn't really care about our app as a whole. All that it knows is that we declared various objects and it proceeds to make each of them exist in our cluster. It doesn't really know that this persistent volume and that deployment and that secret and that service are all part of a big application called WordPress. It looks at all the little pieces that the administrator wanted to have in the cluster and takes care of each one individually. Helm, however, is built from ground up to know about such stuff. That's why it's sometimes called a package manager for Kubernetes. It looks at those objects as part of a big package as a group. And whenever we need to perform an action, we don't tell Helm the objects that it should touch. We just tell it what package we want to act on, like our WordPress app package. And based on the package name, it then knows what objects it should change and how, even if there are hundreds uh, of objects that belong to that particular package. Now, to make this easier to understand, think about this. A computer game is contained in hundreds of thousands of files. There are a few files with the program's executable code, other files with audio, game sounds and music, and other files with graphics, textures, images, files with configuration data, and so on. Now imagine we'd have to download each of them separately, and that would be tedious. Fortunately, we don't have to go through such horrors as we get a game installer. We run it, we choose the directory where uh, we want to install, we press the install button, and then the installer does the rest, putting thousands of files in their proper location. Helm does a similar thing and more 
for the YAML files and the Kubernetes objects that make up our application. We use a single command to install our entire app, even if it needs hundreds of objects. Helm proceeds to automatically add every necessary object to Kubernetes without bothering us with the details. We can customize the settings we want for our app or package by specifying desired values at install time. But instead of having to edit multiple values in the multiple YAML files, we have a single location where we can declare every custom setting. In a file like values.yaml, we can change the size of our persistent volumes, choose the name of our WordPress website, the admin password, settings for the database engine, and so on. We can upgrade our application with a single command. Helm will know what individual objects need to change to make this happen. Helm keeps track of all the changes made to the app files, and that allows us to roll back to the previous uh, so-called revision. We use a single command to uninstall our app, and it keeps track of all the objects used by each app, so it knows what to remove. We don't need to remember each object that belongs to our uh, one of our apps anymore, or use 10 separate commands to remove everything. Helm does all the work. We will look into these commands in more detail in the upcoming lectures. For now, understand that Helm works as a package manager with install or uninstall wizard and also as a release manager, helping us upgrade or roll back applications. The most important thing is that it lets us treat our Kubernetes apps as apps instead of just a collection of objects. And this takes a huge burden off our shoulders as we don't have to micromanage each Kubernetes object anymore. Helm can do that for us. With Helm installed, let's check out what we can do with it. All operations are run using the Helm command line interface. To invoke the Helm command line interface, simply run the Helm command. Simply running the Helm command, or running Helm with the Helm option, will list helpful information. This can serve as a quick way to remember what the right command is to do something. For example, say we want to restore a release to a previous version after a failed upgrade. We might wonder, wait, what was the command to do that? Helm restore? And we then see in this list that the correct command is actually Helm rollback. So it's much faster than looking on the internet for the answer since it's immediately accessible from the command line interface. We can also use this help feature for subcommands. For example, if we want to see what repository related actions we can take, the command helm repo uh, help will show us how we can add chart repository or uh, list chart repository or remove repository and so on. And we can even dig deeper and learn about what a sub subcommand does and what parameters it supports. So now that we are familiar with the basics of Helm CLI. Let's see what we can do uh, with it. So let's assume we are in a scenario where we need to launch a WordPress a website in Kubernetes. And we know that we need a chart to easily deploy the WordPress application. So earlier we learned that all the charts are stored in the online chart repository at artifacthub.io. So we, we go to the website and search for the chart manually. To ensure we get a high quality chart, we can try to find one that has the official or a verified publisher badge. So once the chart um, is selected, we'll see a detailed page with all the info that we may want to know about this chart. So it starts out with the exact commands that we need to use uh, to install the chart into our Kubernetes cluster, then continues with what software components this uses and further down the page, uh, we can even see some of the most important configurable settings that we can tweak. Now it's up to chart developers to mention what they think is important in this description page. Another way to search for a chart is from the command line itself. Use the helm search command to search for WordPress. But note that the search command expects an additional subcommand where you must specify where to search. So you must specify either hub or repo. Hub refers to the artifact hub, which we just saw. We know that the hub is where all the repositories are kind of listed. So this is going to list all charts listed at the art artifact um, hub.io. However, if you'd like to search in specific repositories, then you could use the repo option. So 
Uh, here are the, the results that show a list of charts for deploying WordPress along with the app version, which by now we know is a version of the WordPress that these charts will deploy. Once we have identified the chart to install, we can deploy the application in two commands. As listed in the readme file for that chart, there are two commands to be run. The first is to add the Bitnami repository. So the Bitnami chart repository is available at chartsbitnami.com uh, slash bitnami. It must be added as a repository to our local Helm setup so that when we run the install command, Helm can find where the chart is to be installed from. The Helm repo add command adds the repository. Next, we deploy the application to our cluster using the Helm chart by running the uh, command Helm install my release uh, Bitnami WordPress. So that's it. It's super simple. Deploying an application on a Kubernetes cluster has never been easier. At the end, we even get some useful information about how we can use this WordPress install. So this text is actually generated by the instructions included in the chart. So this way, users can get an idea about how they can continue with their newly installed Kubernetes package. Now, once a chart is deployed, it is deployed as a release. So to list all existing releases, run the helm list command. This is very useful, not only to track what has been installed, but also to see what hasn't been updated in a long time. Now, when we want to remove all traces of this app, imagine doing that by hand. We would have to delete a lot of objects from our cluster one by one to get rid of all the WordPress related components. But with Helm, this is again easily done with a simple uh, command. Since we now have the name of the release, we can remove all Kubernetes objects added by the WordPress website with one simple command. Again, very easy. We can really begin to see the power of Helm as a package manager for Kubernetes. Now let's look at some of the other commands available while working with uh, Helm repositories. So the Helm repo command can be used to add, list, remove, or update Helm repositories. So we already saw the Helm repo add command. Uh, the Helm repo list command lists existing repositories. The Helm repo update command is what uh, somewhat equivalent to what a sudo apt get update uh, command does on some Linux based operating systems. So, in a nutshell, the info that Helm uh, has about that repository is stored locally. And with time, repository maintainers make changes, update stuff, and so on. So, our local copy of this info gets stale and updated. So, the command above refreshes the info that Helm has by pulling it in from the online repository to our local computer. This way, we get the latest data available. Well, that's all for now, and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we release new videos every week.